Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2 where today we are making this little trophy and this is actually for a running group that I participate in, the uh, Coyotes here in Rockford and we're going to be doing a race here soon that is, um, it's a 12 hour race so we're going to be doing a loop in the woods, it's 1.2 miles as many loops as you can do in 12 hours um, and it's a fairly hilly loop so it's, it's rather challenging um, but I'm going to be making a bunch of these to then give out to the finishers so we're going to have to make one out of wood and have a little bit of fun with that then cast this one and this is the first of about 20 that I'm going to be making so let's dive in and take a look how exactly do we make this thing let's make a finisher's trophy and this is actually one for a race on a course called Super Bowl so I wanted to make something that kind of looked like the Super Bowl trophy and I had this large block of hard maple left over. I actually used it to make the head, or excuse me, the tailstock of the spring pole lathe, which I'll be using here in a little bit. And I want to cut it down to a square that is whatever the width currently is to make that the width. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But before taking it over the spring pole lathe, it is easier to lop all the corners off uh, with a plane. The spring pole lathe is a lot slower, and so a plane is actually a good bit faster than the lathe will be. So I'm just going to cut it down to that octagonal shape I drew out, and then round it over a little bit more and kind of get it close to a dowel. Um, a big dowel, in this case like a two and a half inch dowel. <laughs> the scrub plane makes really quick work of that and then we can find out where the center marks are and get it ready to take over. Just using a center finder, pop a little hole in either end to let the, uh, the bit fit into, and then we can spring it up in the spring pole lathe. I have a whole series of videos on making this, and I have a bunch of other things I made on. I don't use it that much because I don't have a lot of shop space, and whenever I set it up, it, it takes up a large chunk of my shop. But one of these days I might make an outdoor shop and, uh, and have it set up permanently out there. Now I use a bunch of different tools. Here I'm using a hook knife um, or a, a hook turning tool. Um, I'll also be using some carbide bits and uh, then a little bit here you'll see me using there's the roughing gouge. Uh, roughing gouge is really a, a kind of a nice one. Um, I do use a skew occasionally though I'm not as adept at that especially with the spring pole the skew is it takes some skill. And I don't sharpen them at a grinder. I actually sharpen them with diamond files and then strop them just like I would any of my others. And I have a whole video on how do you sharpen uh, how you sharpen turning tools with uh, with hand tools. <laughs> and it's a fun art. Now this really drives a lot of people crazy doing this on a spring pole lathe because half the time it's going forward and half the time it's going backwards. And this really isn't a tool for making things, it is a tool for having fun. Yes, you can make things on a spring pole lathe, but it is intended to have fun, it is not intended to make things. So now that I have this kind of bowl shape on one end, on the other end I want to make the triangular base that you see on the, on the Super Bowl trophy. So I'm going to cut it to a length and I want it to fit inside that bowl, uh, inside the cup, so that I can fill it with epoxy and create a mold. And uh, to do so, I cut it to length, plane it down, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then draw an isosceles triangle on the end. It takes a little bit to make that triangle exact, but make sure all the three sides are the same length and you're good. A little bit of paste wax on the plane blade makes it go so much better. So if you have problems with binding, try that out. So we cut down one side, and I'm just cutting it at an angle so that it fits nicely into that neck. And then on that flat side, we can then draw out the other two to have a line to follow along. And then we can repeat the same. Um, being very careful holding it by the bowl, it, it's, it's kind of weak by that thin neck, so I don't want to break it off. Um, so taking my time and doing it easily, and then one by one, you can pop off each of these sides until eventually you have a triangular base and uh, it's ready for the next step, which is going to be finishing and smoothing. I want to make sure that everything else is nice and clean, and I will be doing a lot of wood putty filler because I'm using it as a mold. I want the outside of this to be perfectly smooth. So files, rasps, floats do a really good job of these flat surfaces. But uh, once we get this done, then we want to actually do some carving. And I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this next step on my other channel. Uh, so I'm going to be covering them here as best as I can. I like to use a simple glue to glue on the pattern because it's really easy to scrape off. And I'll literally take a card scraper and scrape it off. And it's the first step in finishing. So what's the problem with that? On this, I have a pattern of the elevation chart of the race. And I know you really can't see it, but I actually want to carve that elevation chart 
into the rim of the bowl on the top of this. So we'll have a Super Bowl trophy that's actually a bowl. <laughs> now, keeping a strop on the bench it just keeps these sharp, and every five or six minutes I'll stop and strop them, keep them good and sharp. And so I'm chopping in down to the depth of that, uh, that line that I drew around from the pattern. And again, that line is the elevation chart, so we're going to be doing this circle over and over and over again, so I figured it would be pretty appro appropriate to do it around the rim of the bowl. With the big gouge, I'm just going to take it down close to the line and get everything just about where I want. And then I'm going to come in with a smaller gouge and bring it right down to that line and get the, the, uh, the outside rim nice and smooth so that it is ready for the next step. And this really is a lot of fun. Uh, so even in hard maple like this, dried hard maple, this is not an easy wood to work with but the curls that come off of it are, are just enjoyable. Now I do want to turn the top of this into a bowl and so I'm going to be using several gouges to slowly work it down. And I don't want it to be a deep bowl, I just want it to look like you know, it's obvious when you look at it, the top of it is a bowl. And uh, working at it back and forth one way and down the other and I have to make sure in some places I'm going um, across the grain and some places I'm going with the grain until I get it down to about what I'm looking for. Now these, these are rifflers and they are a pile of different shapes and sizes and different rasps and files and each one of them has a different grit um, or coarseness to it. And these are great for getting into these edges where every, uh, the edge is uh, undulating and curving and they come in every different shape and size, triangles, squares, rounds, half rounds, and then each one of those then have a, a pile of different uh, a different shapes. Um, I don't really have a great source for buying these. I actually found a guy who landed a huge pile of them and sold them to me a year or two ago. And I don't get to use them that much, but when I do, they're a lot of fun. So after refining the outside edge, I want to carve back in the bowl. And a little bit ago, you saw me using the marking gauge to make sure that there's an even amount all the way around on the edge of the bowl. And then I can use some of those rifflers to go in and refine the shape inside. I'm basically getting rid of any of the ridges and getting ready for the final smoothing. And that is about the shape of it. So everything from here on out is the smoothing and detailing need in order to cast this. Because if I were to cast it now, you get all of these grains in the surface. So I'm going to be going with finer and finer rifflers, getting the edge down in. On the outside, it's just easy enough to sand it and get that nice and smooth. I think I took it up to around uh, 400 grit. Uh, card scrapers work phenomenally, especially on the inside here. I can use that curved card scraper. This is one I made a while ago. I have a video on that. And then when I get it down to where I want, I'm just going to give it a coat of paint. And this is going to make it very obvious where anything needs to be filled in, um, as well as give it a smooth surface. It makes it a little bit easier for the molding. Once that dries, then we can take it over and apply in the wood putty to any of the holes and divots, any of the grain that is showing through, and work that in and then sand that down, get that nice and smooth, and we can take it over and do another coat. And I think I went back and forth between these two about three times until I got the shape I wanted. Now here the audio uh, cut out. Uh, for some reason my camera stopped recording audio for a while and I didn't know it until I went to edit. I want to find out how much epoxy this is actually going to take. So I filled the bucket up with water and then submerged it to find out what it displaced. And that let me know how much epoxy it's going to take and then also how much of the uh, molding material it was going to take. Um, unfortunately, the silicone mold material that I had, I didn't have enough to do it. So I actually used two different mold materials, which you'll see in a little bit. I put it in the vacuum chamber to get rid of all the bubbles. This is always a fun time to see it collapse down in and uh, take all the vacuum out. And I have several videos on using the vacuum chamber as well. Before doing it, I spray a little bit of mold release on the pattern, and then we can start to pour in the silicone mold uh, material into the bucket. And you'll see here, it doesn't come all the way up to the top, even when the, uh, even when the pattern goes all the way in. And this sets up in about 30 minutes. So I can set it in there and let it go. And then once it's set, I can come back in with my other, which is uh, Smoothon's Oom, O-O-M-O-O. -O -O -O. I'll have a link to all these down below if you want to see that as well. And then we can delaminate it uh, about six hours later with this stuff. And you can see there's, there's two tones there. Next thing I want to do is cut this apart. And I'm going to do a nice clean slice all the way down um, until I can pull the trophy out. And now we have a mold that is ready to go. And I can put it back in the bucket so that the bucket will support it and tape the crack on the bucket closed. And we are ready to start mixing up epoxy to pour in. 
For this, I'm gonna use Ecopoxy's liquid plastic. This stuff takes three days to set up, which is ridiculously slow, but that means it has time for all the bubbles to work out and it is really thin, so the bubbles can easily come out of this. So if you wanna buff this down, you can make perfectly smooth and clear really really shiny epoxy and so that's why i picked it. it takes a while and so it takes three three days to make each one of these but well worth it in the end and i can even leave it with a little bit of a matte finish or i can buff them down and get them really nice and shiny and perfectly clear that means they look like glass see how they pull them out of here and voila we have our first trophy and I'm going to be making 20 of these, and each one's going to be a little different. Some of them with different dyes, some of them with different textures on the outside. So each one, each person can pick their own trophy and what they like. So I hope you like this. This is a lot of fun, and I've got to go make some more trophies now. So there you have it. I am actually really happy with how this came out. It's a little bit more frosted than I like, and I think part of that is due to the release on this was still left on the silicone when this came out. So the first few of these are probably gonna be a little bit more milky. Um, and I think I'm going to go through and buff them up, but I'm, I'm really happy with how they came out. I, that, that slightly frosted glass is about what I'm looking for. So a little bit of work. I think this first one isn't perfect, but the next few will be. So yeah, I'm happy. I um, mean, if you have questions why I did that to the rim, that's actually the elevation chart of the race that we're gonna be doing. So it's those hills up and down that are carved into the rim. So we're gonna be doing that loop for 12 hours, round and round and round and round. Every 15 minutes or so, you're doing another loop. Oh, it's gonna be a fun day. <laughs> but I hope you like this. If you do have any questions or comments, ideas, let me know down in the description below. I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So which is more loopy, using a spring pole lathe or running this race?